Okay, so in this video we are looking at representing our angles in the Cartesian plane. Okay, so do you recall what the Cartesian plane is? Okay, it's this little uh, axis system where we have y uh, to x and it's called the Cartesian plane because it was developed by a man with the name René Descartes. Okay, the main man behind calculus. Okay, so let's have a look how would I represent an angle in the Cartesian plane so let's look at something like 30 degrees okay if I had to represent 30 degrees on the Cartesian plane how would I do it well it's not very difficult all I need to do is I measure 30 degrees from the positive x-axis so we know that this side is the positive side of the x-axis. So what I do is I take my protractor, okay, obviously 0 has to be on this side, okay, more, okay, turn it more all the way to 0, and now I notice, oh, I'm measuring in the wrong direction, so I have to measure in the opposite direction, and unfortunately now I have to read upside down or wrong way around or whatever but I can definitely see 30 degrees there okay so that would be 10 that's 20 so that is 30 and all I do is I make a dot at 30 okay 10 20 30 make a dot right there and now I connect that dot with the origin so the origin is 0 0 I connect the dot okay and there I have my angle theta is right there and in this case my theta is actually 30 degrees I'm just calling it theta to show you that it it is general okay and all I need to do now to complete the triangle so that I can use trigonometry is to drop down a horizontal line from here and not a horizontal vertical line down to the x-axis okay so that it makes a 90 degree angle here a right angle and there I have my triangle now it, it doesn't matter how big you make this because again we know that all angles if my observed angle is the same my trigonometric ratios will stay the same so even if this length goes longer okay let's make an example even if I lengthen this as long as I still keep it at 30 degrees and I drop down a new one okay I drop down a new one also 90 degrees then still opposite over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse all of that will remain the same because all that's important is this angle that I measured here now what if my angle was more than 90 degrees in other words this we know that's 90 degrees and what if my angle was more than 90 degrees so I went all the way that side okay so measuring from this let's say what's more than 90 we can go for 140 okay there's 140 let's measure an angle of 140 that point okay there's my 140 angle and if I connect it with a straight line and I drop it straight down you notice something interesting is now that the angle that I measured my observed angle is actually an outside angle to my triangle but it doesn't change I'm still using this as opposite Okay, not that line. I still use that as opposite. This is adjacent and that as the hypotenuse. And uh, let's have a look at how do I find the opposite length, the adjacent length and the hypotenuse. Okay. Okay, now another way to look at this is if we take any point on a Cartesian plane. Okay, let's just use that point for now and we call that point any point in other words it can be any point x comma y okay and we connect that with origin 0 comma 0 then 
there we go and we drop a vertical line down then we have our triangle with our observed angle there that means that our adjacent side this adjacent side that length will obviously be from 0 to whatever this value is but this value if I go up that's the x coordinate okay the x part of the coordinate so this distance will just be x okay from 0 to x will just be x distance and the same goes for the height or the opposite side the opposite side will be y because it's at its height can be read off on the y-axis so that y gives me the hypotenuse, oh, sorry, the opposite side length, the y. Now what about the hypotenuse? Now the hypotenuse we are going to call r. The reason why we call it r is because it forms the radius up to that point. Okay, so what we notice here is that r is of course r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, so r is also a function of x and y. So if I have any point, I can immediately go and draw a triangle and from that triangle I can go and define all of my trig ratios. So let's have a look. Here we notice that sine of theta okay, would be opposite over hypotenuse hypotenuse is the one across from the right angled side okay so that's y over r okay cos of theta okay this theta cos is adjacent over hypotenuse that is x over r and finally we have tan tan of theta will equal opposite y over adjacent which is x y over x now you later understand why this makes it so much easier than talking about opposite over hypotenuse it's still very important to know that but one way of remembering may be this is obviously you don't need to go and remember it you can just go and uh, derive it yourself if you forget it in an exam but one way that my students always like to remember it is they say sign your rear cos x rays oh, x rays tan your exterior sign your rear cos x rays tan your exterior that's one way you can quickly remember that and write it on the front of your paper so that you can make use of it during the rest of your exam now finally I just quickly want to show you that the Cartesian plane is now divided up into what we call quadrants quadrant just obviously means a piece pieces divided into four okay now if we were to measure the, an angle from the positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction in that direction then first quadrant that we come across quadrant one okay is this one here where x is positive and y is positive okay and that will be all the angles that is less than 90 degrees once we pass that 90 degrees the next quadrant we get into called quadrant 2 this quadrant is where y is positive and the x's are negative okay and this one goes up to 180 degrees then we continue further into the next quadrant this one will be called quadrant 3 okay and that is where x is negative and y is negative and the final quadrant that we reach is once we go past 270 degrees so quadrant 3 is from 180 to 270 then we reach quadrant 4 and quadrant 4 is where X is positive okay, and Y is negative and then we just repeat the process again okay we keep on going through um, all four of these quadrants and you'll notice that 
if I draw a triangle in each of the quadrant, the angle that I'm observing is the angle that I make with my x-axis. Okay, and here the angle that I'm observing is this one with the x-axis. And here the angle that I'm observing is the angle I make with the x-axis. And finally here, the angle I observe is the angle I make with the x-axis. But now very important, okay, that though this is the angle I'm going to be using, the actual angle that I am calculating when I'm working in the second quadrant is not that angle because this and that angle would be the same. It is in fact the outside angle for the second quadrant. Okay, For the third quadrant it is from here all the way around up to there. And for the last quadrant it is from there all the way around, 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 up to there. So if I can just briefly show you for the sec second, third and fourth quadrants, if, if I have an angle in my second quadrant and that is theta, okay, since this is 180 degrees, okay, the angle that I'm actually working with is that angle. Okay, this is the one I'll use for my calculations, but this is the actual angle corresponding to a triangle in the second quadrant. And how big will that angle be if this one is theta? Well, I'm going all the way to 180 and then back a little bit. So this would be 180 degrees minus theta. So notice how that when I'm going in the anti-clockwise, uh, sorry, in the clockwise direction, then I subtract my angles. Okay, how about an angle that is in the third quadrant? Okay, if I have an angle, a triangle in the third quadrant, and I use that as my observed angle, then actually the angle in the third quadrant is from there all the way there. So it's an angle that is more than 180. And how much more? Well, that little bit more. Okay. And how much is that little bit? It is theta. So this angle is 180 degrees plus theta. Finally, what about an angle in the fourth quadrant? Okay, so angle in the fourth quadrant. The angle I'll be working with, okay, doing my calculations with, is this little small angle there inside this triangle. But actually the angle that I am observing is that angle. Okay. Now, how is that angle? Well, that angle is all the way to 360 and then back a little bit. Okay, so that angle, this large angle is 360 degrees minus theta. Or, okay, since this is zero degrees, it could just be zero degrees minus theta which is just instead of measuring it from here all the way around to there and back I could just have gone in the opposite direction and that would have just given me negative theta so this triangle can either be used for 360 degrees minus theta or for any negative angle and that's it that's how we represent angles on the Cartesian plane in the next couple of videos let's look at some applications of this